Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today it's time for thermal pads again. We'll replace them on an RX 5700 XT by Sapphire, the Pulse Edition. Honestly, Sapphire cards have great coolers, but the card had a bit of a disadvantage as it was sitting right above the PSU. That means they were exchanging a bit of heat. The memory is constantly at or above 90 degrees C, with me having to have the fan at 100% and the memory is not even overclocked. With overclock getting closer to the numbers we definitely don't want to see, which is 95C. Let's see if today's experiment helps. So there are thermal pads on the backplate, but none for the memory. In old fashion, we'll add them as I had seen great improvements with doing that. We'll do that in the end. Next we unscrew in a cross pattern to get further. This card is one of those who has separate heatsinks, so you'll find another sandwich of heatsink and thermal pads. And that's where we want to get to. For the inside we need 1mm thick thermal pads on the VRAM chips. That was actually confirmed by Sapphire thanks to Gamers Nexus. So the old game again, cutting them to size, removing one side of the plastic and sticking them on. This time I found it easier to put them on the heatsink directly, removing the other side of the plastic before trying to stick it back together. After that redoing the paste, as always I'm cleaning the old one off with 99% alcohol and a microfiber cloth. Same I did of course on every place there was an old thermal pad as well. Here it's important to wait that everything has dried off before continuing. And also I used thermal grizzly, as always, the crying out one and checked that the chip is covered. Screwing the card back together, only the back plate is left. Here I am using 2mm thick thermal pads. Only one row of VRAM chips actually has a cutout for ventilation on the back plate as you can see and those chips I left without thermal pad. It's probably there for a reason. The other is God pads. Sapphire makes it easy as they are clearly marked on the back side of the PCB. All pads used today were by Gelid, which are supposed to be conducting 12 watt per meter kelvin of heat. According to Sapphire's info, they are using 5 watt per meter kelvin, so we should see some improvement. Alright then, cart back together and cleaned up as well. For a fair comparison, it of course landed in the same rig right above the PSU. That was all tested before I redid this rig by the way. And indeed, we have an improvement. This time, compared to other thermal pad videos, we did not have the huge one of 10 degrees but we have one. So same settings as before, no memory overclock and fan at 100%. We are now down to 82C from an average of 90. Very nice. This means two things. Firstly, I can pull down the fan now. So even with the fan at 80%, the VRAM temp stays at an average of 84 degrees. Perfect. Secondly, I could now start overclocking it and see what my new limits are. But I think that card deserves some BIOS modding, as the whole rig was left unmodded for now since the rebuild. That is a story for another time. Was it worth it? Honestly, I don't think I would have needed to do this if the GPU in question would not be at the critical hotspot. Sapphire coolers are beastly and work well out of the box, but you still saw that it can be made a little bit better. For me it's a win, as other AMD cards absolutely cook over the PSU. This Sapphire one holding out nicely now. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but there was no video yet in which we did not see an improvement with changing thermal pads. As you have noticed, this has turned into a whole series of before and after on the channel. And since it differs on every card and model, I hope this is as interesting for you folks to watch as it is for me to do. Some of my older cards I have had mining for many years and I think taking good care of their insides and thermals is a big part of that. Let me know how your Sapphire cards have been treating you in the past. That's it, thank you very much for tuning in. Please subscribe for weekly videos on everything which has to do with cryptocurrency and technology. I wish all the best to each and every one of you. Happy mining and bye!